In this video, I'm going to talk through some of the tools and the process that I've been using to generate aerial maps using my flying wing with PixHawk, a Canon camera, as well as my GoPro Hero 3 and Pix4D. So this is the property area that I've been surveying. It's about 100 acres. And this has been done over the course of the past few months. So I'll show you kind of the first cut of this. This was actually using my Canon. And you'll see some of the development that's going on. And let me just turn on this other layer of a more recent flight. And you can see the progress in the development. And then lastly, about a month and a half ago, I flew with the GoPro Hero 3 because Pix4D now supports that kind of distorted lens look. It will actually flatten your images from the GoPro. And you can see the results are pretty impressive. I was actually surprised at how well Pix4D was able to flatten those images. So those are the three layers. And if I remove them, you can see that Google Maps is fairly out of date when it comes to the satellite imagery for this area. Here's the mission that I've been flying that was used to generate the maps that we looked at previously. And what I do normally is I'll go in here and create a polygon of the survey area and then I'll use the auto waypoint tool and you can use survey the grid version 1 or v2. For this one I used version 1 see I have my paths kind of flying northwest to southeast mainly because this time of year the wind is coming out of the south so we want to be into and downwind as much as possible so we definitely want to minimize the amount of crosswind that we're going to get when we're flying this mission. After our mission is ready what we do is just make sure that we're connected we'll write the waypoints to the PixHawk. Now previously I was doing this all via USB and I highly recommend using the 3DR radios to wirelessly transfer your mission to your PixHawk as well as get remote telemetry. Here's the flying wing at the field with the mission loaded. We have PixHawk, 3DR radio, the X8R receiver with the FreeSky Tyrannus transmitter and in this case I'm actually using the GoPro Hero 3 mounted downward and mainly I wanted to test out the new feature in PIX4D for support with the GoPro Hero 3 and that distorted image. With the GoPro Hero 3 there isn't really a long distance remote trigger capability so there's no way to interface your PIXHawk to take photos based on distance interval so what I did in this case because it was a windy day I set the intervalometer on the GoPro Hero 3 to one second so there was plenty of overlap which tends to cause a bit of problem in PIX4D mainly just in processing if there's a lot of overlap sometimes things can take longer to process and with those settings configured I was able to put the canopy on and do an auto takeoff carry out the mission and we'll take a quick look at the wing in the air. We're flying this mission at about 300 feet above ground level took roughly 25 minutes to complete. You can see that it's cloudy and we're actually flying it into the wind. But PixHawk does a good job of keeping things stabilized. And the GoPro photos turned out pretty good given the patchiness of the clouds. Here are the images from the GoPro that I've uploaded to Dropbox. There's roughly 850 and some odd images that were taken on that flight. So I'll go ahead and just quickly show you some of them. You can see that this is the beginning of the flight. And you can see as I flip through them just that the wing is trying to keep stable. And you'll see some different perspectives as the plane is rolling and pitching a little bit. It makes me truly appreciate what PIX4D does to get all of these referenced and mosaic. So there's very little distortion in the images. I'll definitely be including a link to these images in the description below so you can click through and take a look at the series of images taken during the mission. So let me point out one other thing. I'm not able to actually go through the process of showing you PIX4D. I do plan on doing that in a future video. This was processed a while back, but I do want to show you uh, the output report. It's known as the quality report, and you can actually do this on site. 
there's a rapid check mode that you can do in the field. Now, I've never actually done it. I've always done the full processing just because I normally do the flight, come back, and process the imagery later. But you can see it loads the different parameters. Now, it says 23 acres here. We definitely covered a lot more. Like I said, it's between 75 and 100 acres. But one thing to note, I did not fly with the GPS-enabled camera that day. Normally, my Canon SX260 will get the GPS images, but was not able to do that with a GoPro. But I will show you a way around that here in just a minute. So you can see that here's the ortho mosaic, and here's the digital surface model. And if you go through this, it'll show you the number of images calibrated. And this is a nice heat map that shows kind of the overlap. You know, green is very good, red is bad. And as I mentioned earlier, doing a one second interval photo, you're definitely going to have a lot of overlap. And then scrolling down, you have your different sensor dimensions that are loaded from PIX4D. And then it talks about the number of key point matches in, in the different images. Here's a visual of the flight path. Number of matches from least to greatest. You can definitely glean a lot of information from that. So this quality report is very important when using PIX4D to generate your ortho mosaics and digital surface models. And you can see here that this process took about 14 hours. As I mentioned earlier, there's a one second overlap on that GoPro setup. Now, I've made reference to distance-based photos, and that's generally the best way to do this. If you want to get a nice dispersion of photos, as well as minimize the amount of processing time. But at the same time, you definitely don't want to be in a position where you're missing images or, or there's too little overlap. Just because you're in the air, you're taking these photos, you get back down on the ground, you don't want to have to repeat that process. Once PIX4D is done processing the imagery, what it does is it will basically spit out a mosaic uh, this file is almost 300 megabytes, so generally it's, it's a pretty large file, mainly because they're taking all of these images, 850 images, and stitching them together, which here is the output. It comes in a TIFF format, and you can see the distortion on the edges, but the main area that we're concerned with is right here in the middle. And as I zoom in, and I can continue to zoom in, you see the level of detail here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't flying with GPS, and so this image is actually not geo-referenced. There were no ground control points. Now, there are GPS coordinates from our telemetry log, and if you're not aware, you can actually match those up based on the time the photo was taken with the location of that time from the log, but I want to show you something that I do in cases where you want to do more of a manual Geo reference. I'm using a tool called QGIS. Definitely check it out. It's free and it runs on my Mac. It's a great tool if you want to do manual geo referencing. So here is the image that was generated by PIX4D and it's a plugin called Geo Referencer. And underneath it, you can see that I have a Google Hybrid layer. And what we can actually do is I can go in and create reference points. So if I click here, I'll say I want to get that coordinate from the map canvas. I can zoom into my location, click that point to make sure that it matches up, hit OK, and we can actually manually generate these reference points. And then once that's done, we export this image. It's a geo TIFF that we can then load into any GIS software and we'll see it nicely overlaid onto our Google map in the appropriate location. And once that geo TIFF is generated, from QGIS. I use a tool called GDAL to Tiles. It's a little script that will actually convert that geo TIFF into map tiles that can ultimately be overlaid onto Google Maps. Here we are with the satellite imagery I showed you guys at the beginning of the video and getting back to geo referencing that we did in QGIS. You can see this cabin right here and if I turn on the images that were created from our UAV you can see that it's pretty spot on with that cabin from Google Maps. I realized that was a lot of information. As I got further into this video, I just started peeling back the layers and realized 
how involved this process has been, but just wanted to document at a high level what I've been doing to generate these maps and these subsequent layers from both the Canon and the GoPro Hero 3 cameras. I've been very impressed with the Hero 3 results in Pix4D. And I definitely plan on doing a more in-depth series that breaks down some of these tools and how to use them. So if you have any interest, uh, any suggestions about this, it's definitely an area of my personal interest. I've been enjoying doing this. And I hope this video was useful. And until next time, thanks for watching.